In this video, we will discuss fitting spectral lines on 1D spectral data. We will fit Gaussian or Lorentzian functions. To demonstrate this, let's load an example spectrum which has several lines. This is from the 60F survey and it is a narrow line safe at one galaxy. Those familiar with this sort of spectrum will recognize the hydrogen beta O3 complex, the hydrogen alpha and N2 blended region, and the two silicon 2 lines. This 1D spectral fitting function is also called deblending. I'll first fit the O3 line at 5007 angstroms with a Gaussian. I'll expand the region up so we'll see what's going on more clearly. And there's the 5007O3 line. We first define a continuum level by first pressing the D for D blend on the left of the line, and then again on the right. As you can see, there's this green straight line between two points and a pop-up box in the top left corner with the fit parameters. Now I press the D again to stop the setting of the continuum level. Then to fit a Gaussian, we move the mouse at about underneath the peak and press the G key for Gaussian fit. And then we drag the cursor near to the top of the peak, something like that. And we can move it in and out a bit if we want to set the width. Very similarly. Then we press the G key again to accept the estimate. And then we press the F key to do the fit. The pop-up now shows the fitted Gaussian parameters with errors. We can see that the central wavelength is 5009.071. The full width half maximum is 8.43419 angstroms and the continuum line slope and intercept are 3.04 by 10 to the minus 15 and minus 3.2 by 10 to the minus 19 in the values of flux. You can also see that the flux is 1.8 by 10 to the minus 14 in these units. You can then click the copy to clipboard button and paste the fitted values. So I'm doing copy to clipboard and then I'm going to a text editor and doing paste and here you can see the 1D fit parameters with the names of the various parameters and the values. I'll just click the close button to turn off the 1D fitting as well as Gaussian fits you can do Lorentzian fits these are appropriate for active galactic nuclei broad lines. As you can see, the hydrogen beta one there is. Here is the fit for hydrogen beta. So first we do D and D like that to accept the baseline. And then I'm doing the L key this time and going to the top. And as you can see, it's a slightly different shape to the normal Gaussian. Press the L key again and now do the F for the fit. And as we can see, the broad tail of the Lorentzian fit fits the line better. As you can see, it now says it's a Lorentzian fit. You can also fit multiple lines. I can see that the peak of the hydrogen beta seems to have two components. So I'm fitting a Lorentzian plus a Gaussian before I press the fit key. So I'll just close that off. And again, do D for the baseline. And I do the L key and the L key again to accept the Lorentzian. But now I do the G key and I am adding a little Gaussian component to it. And as you can see, it says the estimates a Lorentzian and a Gaussian and now I press the F key and 
There it now says there's a Lorentzian true values and a Gaussian true values. I'll just move this over here so we can see how the fit works. And as you can see, the fit is a lot better. Again, I'm going to copy this to a clipboard and then I am going to paste it to show you that it does give you the Lorentzian and Gaussian values. Another thing I can do is to do minus fit and this subtracts off the fit from the actual spectrum. So if I do that you can see how the residuals look. And then I do plus fit again to add it back. I can go completely bananas and fit all three lines with a total of four components. The H beta line fitted with the Lorentzian and Gaussian as before and the two O3 lines fitted with Gaussian. So I will do D for the one side of the baseline and then go all the way over to here. D for the other side. I'll do L for the Lorentzian with the H beta line, G for the Gaussian in the H beta line as well, and then do another G for the first O3 line and another G for the second O3 line. So I've got three Gaussians plus a Lorentzian. I will then do F for fit. And as we can see, the there we now have all the fit parameters and I'll just copy those to clipboard and again paste them. And there we have all of the results. An additional feature is the ability to edit the fitting estimates after you have done the fit. This is useful if you have made an error in one line out of several. As a demonstration, I'll fit the same spectrum again, but this time I'll make an error on one of the two O3 lines. So I'll do this. As before, fitting a Lorentzian plus a little Gaussian plus the Gaussian there. And this time I'll say, OK, I want to fit this one and do fit. As you can see, this produces a bad fit. What you then do is go to the Fit Estimates tab and then we will correct the incorrect one, which I think is this one. So I will correct the center by double clicking there. And as you can see, it turns to red. And then I can move the fit center to that point. And also I will change the height by double clicking there. And I can change the height and the full width half maximum, double click there. And I can change the width. I click again to stop editing the particular parameter. And then I press the F key. And now we have fitted it as before. That's all for this video. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel.